Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? Mike Zuber, one rental at a time. And yes, Happy is still with us. <laughs> Hi. World's cutest YouTuber. Yeah, that's right. World's cutest. <laughs> that's your new nickname. World. So somebody on my daily financial news said she looked like Chewbacca. I kind of oh, see that. Yeah. And then somebody else said, hey, that's squeaky because she's very talkative. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Your name's Happy, but you might have a nickname. We may have, we call you something else. So anyways, I'm sorry. I digress into cuteness. Oh, she's the cutest. I thank you. So something I want to do here, Laura, is uh, I'm writing another book, which you know, which you're a part of, right? You're a part of the expert series. So thank you for sending me that bio and pick. That's awesome. <laughs> but as I kind of put the book together, really my goal was to kind of put together 15 stories of success and then in today's world, I see some missing components. So what I thought I would do is bring up a PowerPoint that I built just to kind of, this is how my brain logically thinks. We're going to go backwards. I want to get your thoughts on these, right, wrong, different. What do you think? Oh, All yeah. of that. You cool? I would love to see that. <laughs> Did your little one just come in? Oh, okay. and Pace. Oh, and Pace. Yeah. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome. I just got a Sunday drink. Oh, yay! <laughs> and then she goes, I didn't even say thank you yet. She's like, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm sorry. I, did, I wanted to see. So now I'll start sharing again. My mistake. So we'll go to number five. Okay. I call this one uh, grit mm -hmm. because, as you know, bad things happen in this business. Um. Everybody falls down, but the good ones get up. Yeah. Yes. Right. We, we've heard your story before being a single mom, uh, mm -hmm. you know, young in life. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes grit to just keep going and, and moving forward. Would you, right. would you agree? Like 100%. Yes. Yeah. The, the, everybody, all the 15 stories I'm putting in the book, all start from nothing, all have grit, all have bad days happen. It's, it just does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And some people more than others. And it's, it's, um, I mean, of course it's inspiring to hear people's stories, but um, this is probably gonna sound wrong too. I'm sorry, I'm just like a day of wrong. That's okay. um, it's kind of like, have you ever been in the gym and you see someone who's a really old yep. or really overweight and yep. you're about to like throw in the towel and just leave or, you know, yep. like oh, it's good enough. Like I'm done, I'm, I'm dragging today. Yeah. I always look at that and it inspires me like they can do it. I yeah. can do it. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a rude place to come from, but um, I think reading people's stories shouldn't just be like, oh, that's so cool. You overcame, um, you know, you and I were talking, I don't know if you want to share that, but um, go ahead about the woman who grew up in a section eight housing. Mm -hmm. And so like, you could look at that and be like, oh, that's so cool. Good for her. Or you could be like, holy smokes, look at what I was born into. And like, it might not be perfect, you, yeah. could, you know, but you could say like, I already, you know, had, didn't have to think about that. I didn't have to worry about, you know, whether or not we were going to have a roof over our head or if mm -hmm. we were going to have dinner on the table, like it's yep. a completely different set of circumstances. So um, you could use that to inspire, not just like inspiring, like, oh, that's so cool. That's yeah. good for her. You could use it to push yourself to, I don't know. You've just nailed the exact reason I've been working on this book for a year, right? Mm -hmm. I, I captured 15 stories, all unique, all start from basically nothing but different spots. Mm -hmm. And they all accomplish different degrees of success. Yeah. I did that and, and spent the time creating the stories or documenting the stories because I wanted, I, I hope everybody reads it start to finish. And then I hope people go, hey, those three stories spoke to me. And you go back and read them and be a reminder. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Right. So yeah. cool. All right. This is fun so far. Here's another one. This is actually my superpower, right? Once I, once I decide to do something, I'm remarkably consistent and it's always exciting. Yeah. Hence, you know, five videos a day and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But consistency, you've got it, it, it again, back to the gym, right? You just don't go to the gym the first Monday of every month and hope to be, you know, hope to have six pack abs, mm -hmm. right? You, if you make a decision and you're going to do something, right? The buy box, like we talked about in episode two, or going to the gym or having a great relationship where your husband brings you a smoothie or a green drink or whatever that was, mm -hmm. um, you, you've got to be consistent at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, um, probably the hardest thing for 
everybody is like setting up habits. That's that unless you just have that naturally, you're going to have to fight yourself. Yeah, I yes. totally agree. Yes. Okay. One All right. Definitely sets people apart from others. Awesome. So far, so good. Here's another one. Focus. This is back to the green, you know, the squirrels and butterflies and all that from episode two. Um, sometimes, especially if you're, if my story speaks to you, right? Full-time employee, raising a daughter and building a portfolio in a market I never lived in. Right. I can only do that because I focused on like this much of the market, right? Just like that, you know, three or four bedrooms in this zip code of this size. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything else. If I would have looked at the entire Fresno market, I would, I would never own anything because I wouldn't be able to understand what an average or a good deal is. So for yeah. me, focus is another trait I see. Yeah. And two, don't be embarrassed of being focused in one thing. That's the other thing I noticed from like networking or meeting people. It's like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm a real estate agent. And they're like, oh, what else do you do? And I'm like, no, I'm a real estate agent. I have done a lot. <laughs> like currently, like why would, like, you know, like why wouldn't I just, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But that's one thing that you kind of feel like, well, maybe I should. Maybe yeah. I should be dabbling in all this stuff. And like, um, there's nothing wrong with just being like really good at one thing. No, oh, I, I would tell you that's the key to life is, is too many people diversify too early, mm -hmm. right? Go get good at a thing, become richly rewarded in a thing. And then later in life, once you got that wired, maybe do other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Diversification is <laughs> mm, overrated. Yeah. yeah. Certainly in the beginning. All right. Number two. The dirty word, mm -hmm. nobody likes to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And now by sacrifice, some people hear money, but for most new people, it's time, mm -hmm. right? What people don't realize about you know, our story is, yeah, we sacrifice money, we live below our means, all that stuff is well-documented. But the other thing is we gave up time, right? Mm -hmm. We gave up experiences. We did all these other things. We lived uncomfortably for over a decade. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, some people aren't even willing to do that for a month or a week. So don't come to me and, you know, say, Hey, I've sacrificed for a month. Where's my rewards. I mean, geez, Let, let's, let's, uh, let's do this for a little while. Yeah. It's definitely something. I mean, I think pace is the king of, of this, not in like a terrible way, but um, if pace ever hears that someone doesn't have time to do something or I'm sorry, I'm too busy. And he's like, just wake up earlier. So yeah. I seem sleep. Yeah. Um, and then he'll also be like, well, what'd you do this weekend? Like you yeah. went and played video games. You went and skateboarded with your friends. You went and got drunk. You, like you, there's always like, it's, it's time, it's sleep. And it's like experiences, like hanging out with your friends. Like you mm -hmm. might have to, I don't know. And that's hard too, because you have a ton of people that once you start doing that, you get pushed back from your friends. Like, oh, you're too busy for us now. Yeah. Cool. The answer is yes. I am too busy working yeah. on my future. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's sad too. Cause like you really truly might like start outgrowing certain people in your life. Absolutely. Who aren't doing the same things that you are. Cause they're still doing the old version yeah. of you where they're going out every Friday night and they're playing video games after work. And maybe after work, you're educating yourself or you're reading a book or whatever. Or driving for dollars or networking with agents or going to a meetup or, you know, all yeah, that stuff. It's all just like this is, I mean, this slide just evokes a lot of like, it's just not fun, but it is very, every single person who's successful. I, yeah, I, I this consistently. Like, would you like to be at brunch with your wife right now? Maybe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be nice. You could take Happy out. Yeah. And, you know, have her having a good time outside, but like, it's just something that you've committed to being consistent. Yep. And so you like, it's not, that's the other thing too, is I think people think like, just like you said, oh, I sacrificed for a month. Why am I not successful? It's like, you're going to have to sacrifice yeah. probably this whole time. Like, yeah. right. Like yeah. you, you daily are sacrificing something. Absolutely. I'm creating five original pieces of content every day for more than two years. There you go. So yeah. like, what, what else you want to know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure during this time you've gone on trips. So it's yeah. like, while you're on a trip, you're setting yourself up and you're doing whatever. And um, you've said no to certain things and Absolutely. you've said no to certain experiences and you've woken up when you didn't want to wake up. And mm -hmm. first, yeah. yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. So the, these first four, and I'm going to hide, and we're going to go back. These first four I talk about all the time, right? Sacrifice, focus, consistency, and grit. But this is why, number one is why this, this slide exists. Because I think 
it's not talked about enough, in, especially today. And right now I'm calling it hope. I might tweak it to belief. I'm not sure. But basically, if you are the individual, don't see a return on your sacrifice or your time or whatever, you're just never going to get started, right? If you, you know, think about you as a single mom, um, you know, year, you know, decade ago, decade and a half ago, if you didn't have hope, would you have worked so hard? I mean, it's just, I don't know if it's hope or belief. I'm, I'm stuck, maybe. I don't know if you have an opinion on that. I think it, <laughs> I, I, when you just said that and you framed it in that way, I was like, it was survival. <laughs> survival. Okay. <laughs> oh. This is something I think, oh my gosh, I could probably, um, this is something that I, I think I've shared with you before that my family is very glass half empty and not glass half full type of people. Yeah. And Pace is very glass half full. Um, like anything, even if it's bad, he'll turn it into a positive. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not even bad yet. And I'm worrying <laughs> what could happen and it's going to make it bad. And so, um, the thing that I've struggled with as I've come out of a bad situation is, and Pace has said this to me a few times, and he's like, you don't know what it feels like to make money. You don't know what it feels like. Like, you don't, like, it's almost like you don't know what it feels like to win. You know, mm -hmm. like, say you're on a, a, a sports team as a child and mm -hmm. your team sucks. Like, you're not hoping to win. Like, you are, but, like, you also don't even know what winning feels like. You don't yeah. know what, um, you know, scoring a goal feels like, you know? So it's almost like, um, this is so strange. This is bringing up so many things that has actually, like, truly happened this week. But um, Pace and Jamil were talking, and I'm probably taking this out of context because I was not a part of the conversation. But Jamil was saying that, he knows that no matter like when he wakes up and he's going to go out and do something like he knows that he's going to make money like it's not a question like he knows he's going to make a certain level of money and he's going to be a certain amount of successful because he has seen that he knows what that feels like he believes in himself he knows he deserves it he knows what he brings to the table and so when you're first starting out, like, how do you teach somebody that? Like, how do you, because it kind of becomes fun. Like there is an aspect to what Pace is doing that it's fun. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, it's like getting out there and doing a deal. And it's like exciting because he, he's done it and he knows what it feels like. And he knows what it feels like to win and stuff. And so like, it's a whole different mindset than someone who's like, I've been struggling to like, buy a house for two years I've been struggling to get a deal for two years like it's really like of course that person can be hopeful but it's like it's like this whole mindset thing that's totally different than when Pace is out there talking to a seller versus this person it's like a whole energy and attitude and everything and it's it's just I don't know there's just so much like I Pace would probably be the person to to speak on this more than and Jamil too Jamil's like huge on mindset but like believing in yourself is like or knowing that it's possible yeah. it's like a whole other level of hope than someone who's just like I'm just trying to survive like <laughs> I actually need this and I don't know what it feels like but I'm gonna keep trying you know as opposed to someone who's like if I leave my house today it's gonna happen <laughs> like it's just weird yeah I don't know it's just and, and maybe that's like goes into like the secret and manifesting and, you know, maybe, law of yeah. attraction and stuff like that. I have no idea, but yeah, it's, um, for me, it was survival. And then I've had to move myself out of that mindset of, um, like, I don't deserve it, or I don't know enough, or I'm not good enough to, um, no, I am. And I, I do it and yeah. I'm, you know, I, if I go out, I'll do it again type of thing. Yeah. I'm trying to help. One of the biggest goals for this next book is to try to create stories that resonate with people. Because mm -hmm. I want to, again, I don't know if it's hope or belief, but basically it's, I'm hoping people see themselves in a couple of stories, but I'll be frank. I hope a few people go, wow, they were, they were in a worse position than me Maybe. and they made it happen. Yeah. Right? I, I hope there's some of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's probably what most of us are going to think is because 
Like whether you look at like someone like me talking about my old boss where you're like, I'm smarter than that. If he can do that, I could do that. Or um, look, I didn't have to overcome this as a child and, you know, look at like, yeah. why shouldn't I? Or I have yeah. the support system of a spouse. Like what's stopping me? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe a lot of it is, is hunger too. You know, it's like, it's like hope mixed with hunger can equal success. I like that. And, um, yeah, cause it's really hard. Like how would, you know, the woman that you're talking about who grew up in section eight, like she doesn't have an example of someone making it happen. Whereas like when I grew up, my dad was a business owner. Like I saw someone who had made it happen. I, saw his friends who are currently making it happen, you know, and, um, you're just, it's a different world where like you, I, I knew as a child that that was possible and she probably didn't, right. you know, she had to go be the first, you know? Yeah. And if we're, we're speaking to a conversation I had with Anna Kelly earlier in the week. It's one of the videos in, in Anna's series. She has a playlist just like Laura does on my channel. And in that conversation, I'll just kind of summarize. Uh, Anna shares with us that 70% of the kids that grow up in Section 8 housing stay, meaning as they age, they stay. And Anna and I had a conversation about why that is, right? Is it hope? Is it belief? Is, is it just circumstances? Um, and yeah, Anna was hungry to get out. She did not want to, um, she did not want that for her kids mm-hmm. uh, as she tells the story. So hunger. yeah, hunger. Yeah. Well, just go to that word hunger. Yeah. Desire hunger. Yeah. I like that. Hope plus hunger. Yep. So if folks, if you want to do get some transactions or you want to be inspired every day, what what should they do, Laura? Where should they follow you? Um, my Instagram's Laura Morby and my phone number is 480-717-2070. Very cool. Thank you for your time this Sunday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.